Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, hello, hello. You're listening to Let's Master English, podcast number 59. I am your host, your English teacher, Coach Shane. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you like it, please tell your friends. We have a great podcast ready for you today. A news story, but many people have told me the news story is a little bit dark. So next week, I hopefully will find something very happy and nice or silly and funny. Anyway, it's a great news story. Lots of great vocabulary words. We've got Country Shane. Oh, he's always interesting. We've got a couple of questions. Two questions from YouTube and a question or two from the people who are listening live. That's right. I do the news and the Q&A section live Wednesday afternoons around 2.30 p.m., 2.33 p.m. Chicago time. So if you are available, join us. Maybe I can say hi to you, and maybe you can get your question answered. That'd be pretty cool, right? Then we have the book club, and it's the seven habits of highly successful people. You can get the audio book for free. Yes, you can. www.com audibletrial.com slash LME. You sign up and then you search for a book that you can get for free, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. It's a great book and today we're studying the first habit. It's a book of seven habits. We're studying the first habit, which is be proactive. It'll be a good, nice, short segment. I want you guys to listen to that. Get the audio book. There's no excuse not to have the audio book. Again, you can get it for free. I'll talk about that in the audio book section. And one more announcement. I'm going to have a contest. Now, Let's Master English, that's the name of our website, www.letsmasterenglish.com. If you go there, you will see our logo. Now, personally, I like the logo. It's an L-M-E, and the M is actually in the form of an arrow pointing upward. Actually pointing at, I think, about 45 degrees or 60 degrees, something like that. You can see for yourself. So it's an L-M-E. It has like a college, university, type font, and I think it's great. I really like it. But I know that there are people who think it could be better. So I'm going to have a logo contest. That's right. And this will happen over a month or two. And you know what? This is the prize. The winner, and there's only one winner, the one we choose, the winner will receive Either three months of DDM VIP or via PayPal, $100. I know that maybe doesn't sound like a lot of money, but for some people that would be pretty cool. So we are open to designs. LME, Let's Master English, we, I guess, might have a new logo. It's up to you. If you like the logo that we have, let us know. Our email address is logo at letsmasterenglish.com. L-O-G-O at letsmasterenglish.com. Take your time. I think the deadline will be, mm, boy, I don't know. It's January 25th. Let's try for the end of February. One month. Does that sound okay? Yeah. If you, yeah, that should be good enough. So by the end of February... We will pick a winner. There's just one winner. I apologize, but uh, we'll see. So let's master English. Make a logo. We have a logo right now. You can go to my Twitter page and see it. That's at Coach Shane. It's on our website. And personally, I like it. But can you make a better one? 
Mm hmm. Yeah. Good luck on that. Pretty cool contest. Okay. Enough chit chat. Let's get into the LME news. Where education and entertainment come together. L -l -l Let's master English. Do it. Doomsday is nigh. Will the world end soon? It is expected that scientists will inch the infamous doomsday clock closer to midnight, signifying our progression to global annihilation. The clock is currently at three minutes to midnight. Zero hundred hours means the end of humanity. Nuclear weapons were the main reason for our estimated demise, but now things like global warming, biotechnology, and artificial intelligence are also considered. To see if scientists do indeed think we are closer to the end, tune in live on Thursday at 3.30 p.m. GMT. Wah, 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 wah. Pretty easy. I'm waiting for some reaction here on Periscope and on YouTube. A sad story. Pretty hard. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with all of those. Unpredictable crow. I always want to say unpredictable cow. <laughs> Hi, Sydney's here too. What did you say? <laughs> yeah, it's tough. No, I understand. It, this is a, a pretty tough one here. So let me go ahead and read the story again. Doomsday is nigh. Will the world end soon? It is expected that scientists will inch the infamous doomsday clock closer to midnight, signifying our progression to global annihilation. The clock is currently at three minutes to midnight. Zero hundred hours means the end of humanity. Nuclear weapons were the main reason for our estimated demise, but now things like global warming, biotechnology, and artificial intelligence are also considered. To see if scientists do indeed think we are closer to the end, tune in live on Thursday at 3.30 p.m. GMT. Yes, we have some tough words. Let me give you the difficult words first. I'll spell them. So if you have a pencil ready, uh, go ahead and write it down. Doomsday. D O O M S D A Y. One more time. Doomsday. D O O M S D A Y. Nigh. N I G H. N-I-G-H. To inch. Inch. We're using it as a verb. I-N-C-H. Infamous. I-N-F-A-M-O-U-S. Infamous. 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 Signifying. Signifying. S-I-G-N-I-F-Y. I-N-G. Signifying. Progression. Progression, not too bad. P R O G R E S S I O N. Annihilation, annihilation. A N N I H I L A T I O N. Yeah, unpredictable crow is fast. One more time. Annihilation. A N N I H I L A T I O N. Humanity. Not too bad. H U M A N I T Y. Demise. D E M I S E. Demise. I'll read those words one more time. Listen carefully. Doomsday. Nigh. Two inch. Infamous. Signifying. Progression. Annihilation. Humanity demise. Now, the definitions I'll give you as I read it again. Let's go slowly from the title, Doomsday is Nigh. 
Doomsday means the end of the world. The end of the world, doomsday, ah, is nigh, N-I-G-H, close. The end of the world is close. That's what it means. Doomsday is nigh. The end of the world is close. Ooh, boy. Some people might be happy. I'm not. Will, now we start the story. Will the world end soon? That's the question. Will the world end soon? Hmm. It is expected. People think. We don't know who these people are, but it is expected. People think. People assume something will happen. It is expected that scientists, okay, really smart people, will inch the infamous doomsday clock closer to midnight. Okay, so there's this doomsday clock, and you can find it on the internet. And every year, the scientists adjust the clock. Midnight means the end of the world, okay? And one minute, two minutes, three minutes to midnight, this is the idea. Now, right now, for 2016 up till now, the clock is at three minutes to midnight or 11.57 p.m. So we're really close to the end of the world. So the question is, this year, 2017 is beginning, will we stay the same, three minutes to midnight, or will we get closer, two minutes to midnight, one minute to midnight, oh my God, or will we go back five minutes, ten minutes to midnight, this is the question. So are we closer to the end of the world? We're going to find out because scientists are going to change the doomsday clock and they're expected to inch <clears throat> to inch means to move something a little bit actually to inch means to move something one inch one inch is a measurement it's equal to about 2.54 centimeters so scientists are expected to inch the clock a little bit forward or backward to midnight inch it closer to midnight <gasps> that means right now it's three minutes to midnight they'll probably change it to two minutes till midnight or maybe one minute till midnight <gasps> oh no that's not good that's not world peace right world peace let me read the sentence again it is expected, we believe, we assume, that scientists will inch the infamous doomsday clock. That clock is very famous, but it's not famous in a good way. It's famous in a bad way. It's the evil clock. It's the end of the world clock. It's the infamous doomsday clock. Scientists are expected to inch the infamous doomsday clock closer to midnight. <sighs> Midnight, 0.00, 0, 0, 0, 12 o'clock at night. Signifying, what does this mean? Signifying, to signify means to mean something, like a metaphor. This moving the clock closer to midnight means, signifies our humanity, all of us, mankind, usually the governments, our progression. We are advancing. We are moving towards something. What are we progressing to? What are we moving to? What are we advancing to? Global annihilation. Ah! Global, all over the world, annihilation, destruction, death. Not a good thing. Pretty scary stuff. That sentence, one more time, listen. It is expected that scientists will inch the infamous doomsday clock closer to midnight, signifying our progression to global annihilation. The clock is currently at three minutes to midnight. I told you that. Right now, that big clock, the doomsday clock, is set 
to three minutes to midnight, 11.57. Right now, my clock on my computer is two minutes to three, 2.58 p.m. in the afternoon, Chicago time. So the clock is currently at three minutes to midnight. Zero hundred hours means the end of humanity. Zero hundred hours signifies the end of humanity. The end of humanity, annihilation, death, the end of the world. Zero hundred hours? Ah, yeah. So that's called military time. So one in the morning, one in the morning is zero one hundred. Two in the morning is zero two hundred. Eleven in the morning, eleven hundred. Lunchtime, twelve hundred. One p.m., thirteen hundred. Six p.m., eighteen hundred. Eleven p.m., twenty three hundred. 11.57 p.m., 23.57. Midnight, 12 a.m., 0 hundred hours. Okay? Next sentence. Nuclear weapons <clears throat> were the main reason for our estimated demise. So in the past, since World War II, scientists used this clock and really studied nuclear power. Who has the most nuclear weapons? How is their relationship? If their, rela if their relationship is not good, then the end of the world is closer. So nuclear weapons were the focus because nothing else can really kill all of humanity, but nuclear weapons could. So in the past, nuclear weapons were the main reason, the big reason for our estimated, they're just guessing, demise, death, destruction, annihilation. So when scientists were guessing, well, we're pretty close to death, why? Because of all these nuclear weapons. So nuclear weapons were the main reason for our estimated demise, but now, Things like global warming. I think everybody knows global warming, climate change. Biotechnology. Ah, yes. Biology, technology. So that means like taking bacteria, taking viruses, creating something in the science laboratory. And if it escapes, many, many people could die. Scary biotechnology, and artificial intelligence, AI. Like, what if we make a robot that's really smart, and then the robot gets smarter and smarter, and the robot gets so smart that it actually doesn't need humans, it thinks it doesn't need humans, and then it kills humans. Mm. So, before, it was only nuclear weapons that they really watched, but now they've changed. Nuclear weapons, global warming, biotechnology, and artificial intelligence are also considered. Those things are also measured when looking at the safety of the world. So, what's going to happen? To see if scientists do indeed really do, actually do think we are closer to the end, annihilation, tune in live, watch something live, live on TV, live on Twitter, live on the internet, live on the radio, tune in live, use your frequency tuner, change the channel, tune in live on Thursday, today's Wednesday for me, at 3.30 p.m. GMT, GMT, which is the Greenwich Mean Time. At that time, they will show you live what the scientists do. Is it going to be closer to midnight or further from midnight? Okay, I'm guessing for you all, now the story is easy. Right? So what do you guys think? Will the world get closer 
to Doomsday or further away? I'm curious as to your opinions. It's pretty dark. I agree, Unpredictable Crow. It's a dark story. <laughs> but you know what? Personally, I'll give you my opinion. I think, uh, I'm hoping, of course, that it's getting further away. I agree with Padu. Getting further away. Santa says the same thing. It better not. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, our governments, some of our governments are pretty crazy. Uh, some of our leaders are pretty crazy. But I think people, you know, you and I, on a day-to-day -day basis, we're okay. <laughs> I think we're getting fine. We understand we have differences. And uh, hopefully we can respect each other's differences without having to kill each other. <laughs> right? Yeah, I hope so. Adele thinks it's getting closer. Oh, Freddy says getting further away. Yeah. Adele, I want to disagree with you. 1800 or 1800s? 1800. No S. No S, Sydney. Talking about time. So 1 p.m. is 1300. Not 1300s. No S. Uh, any other questions? Roberto says, Hi from Spain. Hola. You're the best teacher around the world. Gracias. <laughs> All right. So at this point, we've studied the story. You've heard the vocabulary words. Hopefully it's easy to understand. Now, I'm going to read the story again. And I'm going to read it really fast, just like on the radio. So you can shut your eyes. I want you to listen to the story. And I want you to think about how much you understand. Are you ready? Here we go. Doomsday is nigh. Will the world end soon? It is expected that scientists will inch the infamous doomsday clock closer to midnight, signifying our progression to global annihilation. The clock is currently at three minutes to midnight. Zero hundred hours means the end of humanity. Nuclear weapons were the main reason for our estimated demise, but now things like global warming, biotechnology, and artificial intelligence are also considered. To see if scientists do indeed think we are closer to the end, tune in live on Thursday at 3.30 p.m. GMT. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Since World War II, 1991 was the safest the world has been according to the doomsday clock. In 1991, we were 17 minutes to midnight. But right now, oh my God, we're three minutes to midnight. This is scary. Come on, people. Just because we all don't get along doesn't mean we should kill each other, right? Let's be safe. Let's be happy. And let's not die. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Oh, no, that sounds so sad. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Country Shane. Uh, 1991 was the safest year the world has experienced since World War II. Wow. That's a long time ago already. That's 26 years ago. My goodness. Let's get that clock going back in time. And let's see if we got some questions. It's time for some questions, and here are two great questions from our YouTube channel, Coach Shane's ESL. The first question is clothes, T, uh, sorry, C L O T H E S, and months, M O N T H S. How do you say it? What's the proper way? Can we use some cancellation? Yeah. I know that I have made a video on those specific words. So you can actually search for months or clothes and you should be able to find a video. But I'll tell you right now, 
The TH sound in American English is actually a weak sound. It's one of those weak sounds. And the S, along with the Z, is a strong sound. So the S or the Z tend to be very important sounds. I'll give you an example. U and I. We can say U and I, but usually we cancel the D. In that case, the N, which is also a strong sound, cancels the D. There are three strong sounds, S, N, L. And there are three weak sounds, D, T, T, H. So if you have an S next to a D, T, T, H, an N next to a D, T, T, H, uh, an L next to a D, T, T, H, it is possible to cancel those sounds. Not always, it depends on the word, but in a common word like and, we almost always say you and I, you and I. There is no D. Internet, internet, international, international. We don't say internet, international. You can, it's perfect, but usually we cancel because of the N. So let's go back to clothes. C-L-O-T-H-E-S. The T-H is actually a vibrated T-H. Clothe, clothe, and that can be a verb, to clothe someone. Here, with the S, clothes, we're talking about the clothing that we wear. So perfect pronunciation includes the T-H. Clothes, clothes. Okay, it's a smooth transition. That's right, Fernando, don't trust that D-T-T-H. Uh, but the Z sound allows us to cancel the TH. So clothes. Shane, nice clothes. Oh, where did you get new clothes? It sounds exactly like the verb C-L-O-S-E. Okay? So you can cancel the TH. It will make your life much easier if you need to say that word. Months. The same thing, M-O-N-T-H-S. Here, the T-H is an aspirated, not vibrated. So, months, months. But notice, we have the N-T-H-S. The N and the S are really strong. The T-H is weak, so we can cancel the T-H. Months. I've studied English for two months. Two months. Zero TH, okay? Again, however, for ESL students, I highly recommend that you practice keeping the TH sounds. Cancellation for Americans happens naturally. We do not try to cancel the sounds. It just happens naturally. So, clothes, those are nice clothes. How many months have you been here? How many months have you been here? Every American native English speaker can say it perfectly. They should be able to say it perfectly. And without thinking, we can also say, nice clothes. How many months have you been here? Without the THs. So it's a great question. Thank you very much. Another quick question here. R-A-W. R-A-W. That is the most difficult word for me to pronounce. The R sound, the W sound, it's really tough. Yeah, I understand. And let me help you. I think I can help you a little bit here. So the R and the W are actually kind of like the opposite sounds. Er, ah, or in this case, the ah, A-W, sorry. The R and the A-W are actually opposite sounds. Er, ah. So when we do the R, the tip of the tongue is pointed up into the mouth, but not touching anything. And your tongue is a, is a muscle, so use that muscle. Don't be relaxed. Uh, Don't do that. It's er, uh, er, uh, er. Uh. Still, many people have a problem. So what I recommend if you have a problem, bring the tip of your tongue and Put it on top of your mouth and you can feel, you can go back and forth. You can feel like from your teeth and then there's a bump. It's called the alveolar ridge 
and then there's it's really hard the skin is hard like a bone and and then if you keep going back the skin gets soft you can see the bone ends and it's soft right okay if you can point your tongue to the soft part don't touch anything or or keep your mouth kind of vertical you can even put your hands on your cheeks and you can even push er er and if your tongue is back all the way pointed up you should have an r sound yeah you point it to the soft part the upper soft part er 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 it's not a beautiful r but it is an r so if you can do the front r that's better but if you can't in America, when we have children, and sometimes children have speech problems, this is what we teach children how to make the R sound. It goes back, er, yeah, it's like an ER, 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 er. It's a very dark sound. Now, the AW sound is the opposite. Take the tip of your tongue, and this time go to the bottom teeth, and feel the bottom teeth, and then go down, and then still you feel bone, right? And then if you keep going down, again, it gets really soft, right? So even down here, there's a soft part. Now, take the tip of your tongue and stick it into the soft part and drop the jaw. Aw. Oh. And again, you can keep your hands on your cheeks. Aw. Oh, Aw. Oh, Aw. Oh. Don't move your tongue. Keep it down there. Aw. Oh, Aw. Oh. That is the A-W sound. So now let's try and put it together. Raw. When you go from the R to the AW, don't let the tip of your tongue touch anywhere except for the AW. Raw. Raw. It's a very vertical sound. It starts up on top with the R and ends down below with the AW. Raw. 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 It's not easy, but if you practice, you can do it. If you have a coach, like we do for our perf and DDM classes, ask your coach to help you with that pronunciation. It is a tough one, but it's a good one. Yes, it is a jaw accent uh, exercise. You got to exercise your jaw raw, raw, raw. Very good. Okay, let me take a question or two from the people on Periscope or YouTube. What's the best way to pronounce the her in the phrase hurt her? Do I need to cancel the H? Okay, so the word her. Can we cancel the H? For example, I hurt her. Can we say I hurt her? Actually, in, in that sentence, I wouldn't because her is a context word. It's important. But if I said, I hurt her feelings, now we can actually cancel. I hurt her feelings. I hurt her feelings. Now, feelings is the context word. Hurt and feelings. Her, H-E-R, is one of the seven H's. And the seven H's are he, her, him, his, had, has, have. Those seven words all begin with H. They're very common in daily spoken English. And when those words are in the middle of a sentence, very frequently we cancel the H sound. If the word is at the beginning, we usually keep it. If the word is at the end, it's usually a context word, which means it's important and we would keep it. But when it's in the middle, many times we do cancel. Again, this is something you can hear and learn and practice in my DDM class. And on YouTube, it's for free. www.letsmasterenglish.com slash TV. And then you'll see uh, the daily dictation channel. So you can go there and watch it. One more question. What is the harder accent to understand? For me personally, Irish English. 
and I mean the country Irish guy, and I've met many Irish people. I'm Irish, but, you know, my blood a long time ago. Irish English was so difficult to understand, and it's really tough. It would take me at least five minutes to tune my ears into Irish English. And remember, Irish English, it's not just the accent. Sometimes they use words that only Irish people use. So it's not just the accent, it's the vocabulary too. But Irish, that accent, for me, was pretty tough. It's time for the book club. Again, our book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's a great book. I have read it three times. And now I'm listening to the audio version. Again, you can get this audiobook for free. Just go here, www.audibletrial.com slash LME. Let me spell that for you. www.audibletrial, A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L, audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. Let's master English, okay? Yes, and this is a, a sponsor. So if you guys sign up, I actually get a couple of dollars. You get your book for free, and they will charge you. After one month, they're going to charge you like $14.95, something like that. And then you can get another book, okay? So you get one book for free, and then after that, they charge you every month, okay? So I've been a member. Actually, I have two memberships and I've been a member now for about three years so I have how many audiobooks do I have my goodness I have about 40 well more than that I guess yeah uh, about 40 maybe 50 audiobooks um, and I love it when I go exercising I listen to it when I'm driving I listen to it when I go fishing I listen to the audiobooks it's fantastic and uh, it's very convenient I, you know what's funny about me? I actually prefer listening to books that I have already read. Yeah, I don't know why. I That's just the way I do it. So I have the print version and I have the audio version. I like that. It's good for me. Anyway, uh, you can get this book absolutely for free. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Last week, we talked about the opening of this book great book and today we are finally getting into the first habit habit one be proactive p r o a c t i v e be proactive be proactive basically make your life better by doing something about it if you have a problem in your life fix it be proactive now actually when we say the word proactive, let's go back. Proactive might not be so familiar to many of you. So let's talk about the word reactive. Reactive. So react is the verb. So if somebody is nice to you, how do you react? If they give you a nice action, your Reaction is usually nice. Hi, Shane. Hi. If they say it nice, I say it nice. Right? That's a reaction. Something on the outside makes me respond the same way. What about the weather? Many of you, if it's a nice, sunny, warm day, you walk outside or you open the window and you feel happy. The weather is causing that reaction. You feel happy. But if it's dark and stormy and rainy and cold and windy, you probably, many of you, might not feel so happy. You might be angry or sad or depressed. The weather is affecting you. You are reacting to the weather. Yeah. And that's how most people live. They react. They're not proactive. They're 
reactive. So what does it mean to be proactive? Proactive means that you need to understand that you are able to react any way you want. You are not supposed to or you don't have to automatically be sad when you see rain. You can choose to be sad, but you can also choose to be happy. Or you can choose to be scientific. Oh, ho! it's raining outside. Well, that's very good because the farmers need the rain or the lakes need the rain or maybe there's some dust in the air or on the ground and the rain will clean off the dust. You are able to react any way you want. You have that power. You are responsible. And that's what you need to do. You need to become responsible. You need to become responsible for your reactions. Therefore, you're not reacting. You're proacting. You're proactive. You are choosing your reactions. Does this make sense? Now, he gives a, a many, many great stories, but I like the story where he talks about, uh, he talks with a bunch of business people. And it's a three-day seminar. And on day one of the seminar, they're asking, you know, what has happened to the industry? And the industry is just terrible. You know, it's getting smaller, sales are going down, and they have to fire people. It's really terrible. So at the end of the first day, everybody was discouraged. They were not happy. They were depressed. On the second day, the theme was, what's going to happen in the future? And everybody thought, oh, it's going to get worse. You know, it's not going to get better. And on the, at the end of the second day, everybody was really depressed. And, oh, my God, this is just terrible. I should quit. I should go home. On the third day, they changed. And they decided to become proactive. So they said, okay, right now the industry is not doing well. In the future, it's probably going to get more difficult before it gets better. So, what is our response? How can we react? We know it's not good. We know it's going to get worse. Now, what can we do in order to make our companies successful? Even though the industry is not doing well, it's probably going to get worse we can still find ways to be successful. Maybe our sales are not going to grow fast, but we can still find ways to become successful. This is the idea of being proactive. And when they did that, when they started concentrating on things they could do, at the end of the meeting, they were excited. They were hopeful. Looking at your present situation, you might get sad. Thinking about your future, you might get depressed. Now, stop thinking about that stuff and start thinking, okay, so it might not be good, it might not get better, so what can I do to make it better? How can I do something to make it better? This is the idea of being proactive. For some people, that's easy. It really is. Uh, for me, for example, um, I'm pretty optimistic. I'm an optimistic guy. I like to see things in a positive way. But many people are realistic, or many people are even pessimistic. They see the world in a bit of a negative light. And when something happens, they say something like, oh, there's nothing I can do. Oh, it's not going to get better. Oh, he makes me angry. He makes me sad. What can I do? The boss makes me angry. I'm angry. What can I do? 
Oh man, I, I have a job, I have a responsibility, I have no freedom to choose what I want to do, I have to do these things, there's nothing I can do. Well, sometimes there is nothing you can do about a certain situation. Those situations are outside your circle of influence. He talks about the circle of influence. So if you have a piece of paper, make a circle. Now, below the circle, let's make a list of things that bother us, things that we don't like, okay? So let's just write a couple of things here. Um, I don't like my job where I have to work on weekends. So working on weekends, I don't like that. Um, I don't like the way my children study. You know, when they're studying in their room, they're listening to music, they're on their computer, they're on their, their you know, cell phone. I don't like that. That's not good studying. I don't like that. Mm, I don't like my English ability. My English ability, you know, I've studied for many years, but my pronunciation is not good. My listening skills are so-so. Uh, I just don't like it. I don't like my wife's cooking. Bum, bum, bum. Be careful. <laughs> Write it down. I don't like Donald Trump. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so those are five things. Now, let's go back to that circle. Now, inside the circle, we're going to write things that we have power over. Outside the circle, we're going to write the things that we have no power over. Okay? So let's start with Donald Trump. Is Donald Trump in the circle or outside the circle? He's outside the circle. My wife's cooking. Do I have any power, influence, over my wife's cooking? Well, <laughs> for some people, yes. For some people, no. Okay? So, if, it's, if you do have power, then put it inside. If you don't have power, then put it outside. My English ability. Now, you might think you don't have power, but you do. So, put your English ability inside the circle. My kids study habits. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, do you have influence? Ah, oh, boy. That's a tough one. Let's put that one on the on the circle. Okay, so not really inside the circle, not outside the circle. Let's put it kind of on the circle. Working on the weekends at your company. Oh, you need your job. You could you could quit your job, you know. You could change jobs. You could talk to the boss, but yeah, boy. Let's put that one on the circle too. Okay? Now, Donald Trump is outside the circle. Wife's cooking inside, English ability inside, kids study habits outside, working weekends outside. Anything outside the circle, stop thinking about it. Don't waste your time. There's nothing you can do. You cannot do anything about Donald Trump. Forget about it. It's done. Donald Trump's gone. Good. So now we only have four things that we worry about. Working on the weekends, my kids' study habits. Those are on the edge. We might have a little control, uh, but we might not. It's kind of dangerous. Forget about it for now. Forget about it. Let's go inside the circle. Your English ability. Your wife's cooking. These are things you have influence over. These are things you have power over. These are things within your circle of influence. And proactive people focus on their circle of influence. That's where your energy needs to go. Don't worry about your children. If your children see you working hard on your circle of influence, maybe they will learn and they will 
change their study habits. Your job, that's a tough one. I don't think your boss is going to change. Uh, maybe you need to look into a new job. But forget about it for now. Just focus on the inside of the circle. And as you start influencing the inside of your circle, you're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. Sometimes you won't, but sometimes you will. And the proactive people, when they make a mistake, the first thing they do is say, oops, I made a mistake. Immediately, oh boy, that was a mistake. And then they fix it. Okay, I'm sorry, let's not do that, whatever. You know, honey, your food is terrible. What? Ah! Oops, that was a mistake. So, honey, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean it like that. It's just that I think we might be able to help me and my health by changing some of the cooking styles. We learn from our mistakes. You acknowledge the mistake, you try to fix the mistake, and you learn from the mistake. That mistake you made with your wife, you can probably learn from that later when you talk to your boss about working on weekends. Focus on your circle of influence, the things inside the circle. Practice, practice, fix the things that you are able to fix. It might be a mental adjustment. Maybe you just need to forget about something. Maybe it's a physical adjustment, like your English ability. You just need to sit down and practice your English. Focus on these small things first. Fix them. Practice. Make sure that you understand when you make a mistake, fix the mistake, and learn from the mistake. This is what proactive people do. And at the end, he gives a challenge. Work on that inside, the smaller circle of influence. Work on the inside. Make small promises. Make small goals. Work really hard. Keep those promises and goals. And don't be critical of other people. You're not going to change them. You cannot really change other people. You might be able to change something they do, like telling your wife, too much salt, please don't add salt, or too much sugar, don't add that much sugar. You might be able to change that, but you're not going to be able to change the person. You need to understand that changing people is almost impossible. So, don't judge. Don't be critical. The best way to influence people is to be a good, strong person. That's the best thing to do. That is being proactive. Be proactive. Learn how to take control of your reactions. That, everybody, was chapter one. Now, chapter two, this is an assignment. I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to read a bit of chapter two, and the assignment is coming up, so listen carefully. See yourself, imagine yourself going to the funeral of a loved one. Somebody died. You're going to the funeral. As you walk inside the building, you see the flowers, you hear the music, very sad. You see the faces of friends and family. You feel the sadness of losing that person. And you also feel the joy, the happiness of having known that person. As you walk down to the front, you suddenly see the funeral is for you. It's your funeral. A few years later, you die. It's your funeral. You take a seat and you wait for the service to begin. There are going to be four speakers at your funeral. The first speaker is from your family, a family member. Maybe your husband or your wife, maybe a child, maybe a parent. The second speaker is one of your friends. 
Maybe it's a work friend, a best friend, a childhood friend. The third speaker is somebody from your work or school. And the fourth speaker is somebody from your church or other type of organization that you're a member of. Now, think deeply. Think carefully. What would you like each of these speakers to say about you and your life? That's the assignment. Habit two is begin with the end in mind. And we will talk about this next week. I hope that you listen to the entire chapter. You'll get some great ideas on what you can do. It's not that difficult. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it, this is a great book, everybody. Uh, it's an important book. And most people, I think, already know these seven habits. But it's nice to review the seven habits. It's nice to think about them. So good luck with that. I hope you enjoyed this section of the book club. Oh boy, it's the end of another podcast, LME59. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to this podcast. I hope it was interesting. I hope it wasn't boring. If you enjoyed the podcast, please tell your friends. That means so much to me. Um, you can go to iTunes and leave your notes, leave a, leave a letter for me. I read those letters. And please give me a good rating. Five stars. Five stars. I would love that. Uh, don't forget our website, www.letsmasterenglish.com. We have uh, many things that you can do there. Lots of free videos and free podcasts. Of course, I would love it if you joined our classes. We actually have three classes. One for listening, called DDM. One for speaking. It's called PERF. P-I-R-F, and one for advanced speakers. It's called A-E, or Action English. Right now, Action English is full. There's no room. But if you're interested in joining Action English, send us an email, A-E, at letsmasterenglish.com, and we'll get back to you. If you're interested in joining DDM or PERF, I recommend getting the free lessons. The free lessons, eight DDM lessons and three PERF lessons. Just sign up here, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. Get those free lessons. And you will also be able to get the newsletter. Every Tuesday, every Wednesday, you know, right in there, once a week, we send out our newsletter. It's got great information some funny pictures of me and how I live, and I think you'll enjoy that. Thank you guys so much. You have a fantastic week, and I will be back again. Together, let's master English!